How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another fighting game lecture. So I have to apologize because I said in the last lecture that we wouldn't be doing another setup lecture, but I promise this is probably the last one. And what we need to do in this lecture is we need to fix a few things. The first thing is our pixel rounding. So we made our camera in our last lecture and I forgot to say that you need to go to your actual project properties. And to do that, let me go to my game layout here and go to project properties, hit view, and then turn pixel rounding off because otherwise our camera and our player, anything our camera is following will snap this player per integer and you don't want it to do that. You want it to go per float value or per pixel. So what we want to do there is just turn that off and it'll fix any shakiness your player has been having. So definitely turn that off. The next thing is let's give this an actual name here. So you're going to notice that it's called new project right now. And if I hit save and if I hit play, and it loads up this, it's gonna say new project construct two preview. We can leave the construct two preview, but what it's saying is we don't really have a name for this. So let me go to my project properties again, and let me call this my fighting game. Now there's a reason why I'm calling it the fighting game, and I will get to that in a second. And this is the pretty much all of the things that we needed to redo here and finish up. Uh, I'm gonna give it the description of fighting game because I'm really descriptive. I'm gonna give it a reverse domain name for my ID. This is if you were to export to the App Store or something else. Pretty much you have to have an ID to export to anything other than uh, HTML5, which is what we're going to do, but you should still have it anyway. If you have a website, you're gonna do a reverse domain, which is the com goes first, so .com, .jwa, which is my website, and then you can just give it the name of fighting game. Oops, that didn't say game, but you get the point. And you can give yourself some credit. And you can also, you know, give yourself some emails and websites if you want to give this file out. Otherwise, this will probably just be attached to your export. So what we need to do that I didn't get to cover is our main menu. So let's go to our menu event here and let's go in here. And you'll notice that I fixed it already. But what we need to do is we need to make sure that this is going to our game layout. Step one, that was something we needed to fix. Step two, we want to be able to set our title. So we want to be able to control our browser and we want to be able to control Node WebKit. Now Node WebKit, you can only test it out and export to it via the personal edition or greater. But if you're using Chrome, you should still know how, the, how to do this and that you can do this. So what I did was I double clicked here. I'll delete this for you so you can actually see. Let me delete these. And what I'm going to do is go to my game layout here. I'm going to add, I'm going to add the function object because we're going to need that. And I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to double click and I'm going to go down to our platform specific. And you can see all the platforms that you can actually access, which is really cool, especially things like the Skira Arcade, Twitter, and just Google Play, Facebook. Those are all really cool. I want to access Node WebKit, so I'm going to add the Node WebKit object, but maybe in your game you want to add more. So technically these two are pretty much completely different things, but I'm going to put them all into my plugins just so I know that these are my plugins from Construct 2, but you could even nest these a little bit more as your keyboard and gamepad go for input and whatnot, and so would your touch button. Okay, so enough of that rambling. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually go to our, let's think here, we're going to make a new event sheet subfolder. And this is just extra organization. You do not have to do it this way, but I'm going to right click and add a new event sheet here. And oops, I meant to add a new subfolder. Let me right click and add a new subfolder. I'm going to call this my functions. And that way I can actually make event sheets. Let me just drag that event sheet that I made in there. I can make my functions separate event sheets and now technically I could have a lot and I could always put them and in most of my projects I put the functions into one event sheet that way I just know where everything is but I figured since we're separating everything we might as well separate every single function now we didn't go over and we haven't really had the need for functions yes it it adds to this extra level of you know just dynamic calling I think we did it for our I don't think we have a screen shake in here yet, but uh, we'll do it for our screen shake. We'll do it for other things, but we haven't had a need for it. Like we could put our player movement there. We could put our player states there. There's a lot of things that we could be using functions for, but we haven't had a need for it at the moment. And that's totally okay. And actually now we have a need for it. So here's a way that we can do functions that's different. If you have the free edition, just put it into one event sheet. I do it all the time. 
not a big deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this. And for some reason, I always like to name my functions differently from everything else. So I'm going to call this my uh, I'm going to call this my NW title because that stands for Node WebKit Title. And actually, you know what? I want to name it underscore functions. So everything for my functions are going to have underscores in it, and they're all going to be lowercase. And it's just my weird convention. You don't have to do it, but for me, I'm consistent with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add another event sheet here. I'm going to call this my uh, NW, and I'm going to call this full screen function. So these are the two things that we're going to be adding here. And this will actually work for the browser as well, because we're actually using this for the browser. So we might as well call it NW browser, but you'll get the, the idea here. So what we're going to do in our NW title function, we're going to add the event. If I go into my plugins here, I'm going to say NWJS. No, I'm not. What am I going to do here? Oh, man. That was getting me tripped up. Let's go to our plugins. Let's add a new function. There we go. And on the function NW title function, what we're going to do is we're going to add the action to our NWJS object where we set the title of our game. Now, on our main menu, the title is Lambent Fighter, which Lambent just means like neon colors, and we thought it was a fun name. And you can, uh, you know, you can add your, if you had a variable for your author name, you could say author name here. Um, or we could just say semicolon by Jeremy Alexander. Cool. So there we go. We have our title set, but we need to actually add all of our functions. So let's go to our game events and let's minimize this and minimize this. And we might as well honestly add this as its own group rather than putting in a subfolder in the game event here. And I will make a new group by hitting G and I will, I've selected my start of a layout and I'll call this my functions. And this is optional. This really, really, really is optional, but I actually really do enjoy making my games very, very organized like this. It's a bit ridiculous, but if you do ever want to take one of your games to the next level, this is a great way to do it. And let me right click and edit this and just say uh, all functions for games. You can also put your functions into these sub events here. So if we have a camera follow event here, we could hit N here and we could add something, but then you see how many event sheets that we have to add. And it's, I don't like to do it that way. I like to keep it all neutral and center. And that way I just know where everything is being called rather than having to go back and forth and find where I'm calling this event sheet and what's going on. All right, anyway, back to our title. Uh, so that should work now. And now we have this included. It shouldn't work actually. I have to go to my menu event. So let's go to our menu event here and let's see what's going on here. Every 1.1 seconds we have when we hit enter and we have our gamepad. So none of this is actually going to help us. So let's go system, start of layout. Let's put this to the top and let's add a new action. And all we're gonna do is go to our function and call the function that we just made, which is again, NW title func. And that's also another great tip here is because I have this the same name as the function, I'll never lose the name of the function. And it's a lot easier to know what function you're calling. And for me, I kind of forget the functions a lot. Okay, so now we're calling this. And this is the whole point of why we're doing it as a function is now I can copy this, and I can just copy this action here. And I can go to our game event, and I can paste it into our game event. So it's always calling the same title. So when I hit play now, you can see that it's going to override everything and call it Lambin Fighter by Jeremy Alexander. And that's on our actual there, let's go to our menu layout and hit play. And Okay, it didn't do it there, that's interesting. And I know why it didn't do it there, and that's silly me. It didn't do it there because we don't actually have it included into our menu event here. And there actually isn't really any harm as to why we couldn't include our game event in our menu event. And as long, because our game event has our functions in it, it has everything in it. And as long as there's not something on our menu layout that this would affect, it should work perfectly fine here. So if I hit play, I don't think there's no player object here. There's nothing that could get in the way here. I can hit enter and there we go. So that's how we're gonna set our title. Now let's actually set our full screen functionality. So this is something that's gonna be really cool. Uh, let's, let's think. So we haven't gotten into the music event here, but we have gotten into our debug. So let's go look at our, our debug here. This is one of my favorite things because it's such a simple and yet super important trigger. And I'm gonna probably be making another video as to how important this trigger is. And it's important because it's useful for 
every little thing because you're mapping it to one uh, keyboard functionality, which at first, if you're trying out Construct 2, you're gonna be like, why on earth does this not work? Why can't I map this to its own keyboard functionality? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy this because this is going to help us out a lot. I'm gonna hit paste here. And what I have, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm gonna be turning our full screen on and I'm gonna be turning it off. And I wanna map it to one specific button. In this case, I'm gonna pick the F key for full screen. And what we're going to do here is we're going to need to figure out a way to trigger on and off. We need um, something to say true or false. So we might actually going to need a full screen object here. We might actually be able to hack into our camera object. So let's do that. Let's go to our level. Let's go to our camera and let's go and add another instance variable. And uh, oops, not to our viz family. Wait a second. Why does that have that? Uh, oh, I guess it just adds viz family to our instance variables. Interesting. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our instance variables here and we're going to make this a Boolean and we're just going to call it full screen. And there we go. So now we have the full screen variable in our camera object. And now we can replace this object all together with our camera. So let's go to our level. All I did was hit R on the key R on the condition there. And we don't want to check if it's viz family. We want to check if it's full screen. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to delete that condition and hit paste. And I'm going to right click and invert. Or if it's not full screen, that's all we want to do. So now we get the benefit of doing that again. So I want to set viz family. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard again. I'm going to go to my level. I'm going to not set viz family to false. I'm going to set full screen to false. And then I don't need to set anything to visible so I can get rid of that altogether. I'm going to copy this and I'm actually just going to control click it down and I'm going to set it to true. Okay, so now we have our on off switch, but we need to actually request full screen and not request full screen. So if it is full screen, we're setting it to false. So we're canceling. So let's add the action to our plugins and this is actually in the browser. It's not in NWJS. So I'm going to go to our browser and we're going to cancel full screen. Now, if it's not full screen, we're going to add the action to our plugin to go to our browser and we're going to say request full screen. Now, here's what we need to do specifically. We need to scale it to the inner version. We need to stretch it and scale it inner. All of these other options, I think scale outer might work, but all these other options are not going to scale it up the way we need to do it. So we're going to say stretch scale inner and I'm going to hit save here. And now let's go to my game event and I actually already have it imported. I already did that. So it's included there. So it should work right off the bat. So if I hit play here and I hit F, no dice, let me hit enter. Let me hit F. Oh, there we go. So it's working for our game. Maybe it's just not working for our menu event. But if I hit F on and off, there we go. Full screen is working on and off. So hopefully you can get that full screen. I'm not sure if that's recording, but it is working. Let me go to our menu layout and see why it's not doing it for our menu. Let's go to our menu event. It's including that, and it's including that there. So it should technically work. Maybe it just didn't want to work the first time there, or maybe it's not recognizing my, my key presses here. But regardless, it doesn't really matter if it's on the menu event. What it does matter is if we have an option for it. So let me actually make this bigger there. Huh. That's interesting that it doesn't want to work there, but it's not the end of the world. We want to get to make it, making our actual gameplay for once here. So that's what we're going to be doing. And later on, I'm probably going to have an entire section dedicated to making an actual menu. I know this is less of a menu than people wanted to see, but at least we have our gamepad connected. And it's, I mean, we have the flashing thing, which might be some people might not know how to do, but at least we have it there. Making a full option screen and making menus and stuff like that as long as you know this on off logic, you should be perfectly fine because you can add this to sliders, you can add this to buttons. There's so many things that you can add this to. So I think we're pretty good here. This has been a very long last uh, fixer upper lecture where we had to just add a few more set of things, but let's get to making this game and let's not worry about anything else. I'll come back if I figure out why that doesn't work on the menu layout, but it does work on our game event. So now we have things ready to go. So thank you so much for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.